And because I'm inheriting from utils, I can use any method that's within that class because it's like it's copying that code over to better wrapper. But there's something else really going on, which I'll show you a little bit later. Welcome back to Understanding Python. My name is Jake, and today I'll be covering class inheritance. Inheritance is a powerful feature that allows us to use functionality from another class or multiple classes. Understanding and mastering inheritance will give you the tools to become an amazing Python programmer. So let's get started. Now as a prerequisite to this video is my video on classes. So if you haven't watched that yet, stop right now. There will be a link in the top right. Click that, watch the video, and then come back. Now on screen, you'll see that I already have defined a class called loose init. And what this class does is allow us to pass in any keyword arguments that we want, and it will add those arguments to the class's dictionary attribute, allowing them to be dot accessible. And if we want to use this functionality in another class, all we have to do is inherit from loose init. And that looks like this class child. And then we're going to use the open and close parentheses. And in here, is where you put the parents of a class. And this could be one or multiple. For now, child will only inherit from loose init. So right away, we can create an instance of child using this new functionality. We'll create an instance of child called sister, whose name is Kiara, age, is 13. And then we'll also give Kiar a brother who's also a child. His name, we'll say Hunter, with an age of 15. And then to prove that these are dot accessible, we can add a couple of print statements saying sister dot name is sister dot age years old and we can copy and do the exact same thing with brother just changing sister out for brother and if we run this we see Kiara is 13 years old Hunter is 15 years old so with nothing really defined in the child class, you can see how powerful it is to inherit functionality that's already defined in other classes. And while this is useful by itself, it becomes even more powerful when you inherit from multiple classes. So I'll go ahead and define another class. Okay, now I've created a new class called utils, and this provides two methods. The first being a from dict method, which allows us to create an instance of a class by passing in a dictionary of key to value arguments. And the second being a method that allows us to convert a class into a dictionary, or rather return a dictionary of all the non-private attributes of a class. And the way I did this is to iterate through all the items in that class's dictionary and then make sure that none of the keys start with an underscore. Now to apply this to our child class, what we'll do is add a comma after loosen it and add in utils. And now it has both the functionality from loosen it as well as the utils class. To demonstrate this, we'll give those two a cousin, which will also be a child. But this time, we're going to use the from dict method of the child and pass in a new dictionary with name. And we'll give it a name of Amanda. And for the age, we'll put 17. We'll add a new print statement for the cousin. And then we'll also go ahead and print out the sister's dictionary. All right, now we're calling the to dict method on sister. So we've saved it. Now let's run it. And again, we see Kiara's 13, Hunter's 15, Amanda is 17 years old. So 
it was instantiated perfectly using that from dict method in the utils class. And at the end, we see the output from calling to dict on sister is name Kiara, age 13, in a dictionary. This kind of feature here is powerful if you want others to be able to export the data in a particular class, maybe to save it to a file so you can bring it out later or whatever you want. All right, so you're happy with this functionality so far, but you've decided that loosen it is just way too loose. It allows you to get anything that you want into there. And without touching the loosen it class itself, you want to be able to kind of control the input that's going into the class during instantiation. Say that someone's passing arguments into your child class that start with bad, and you don't want that. So they're putting bad arg equals ASDF, sure. So what I'll do now is define a new class that sits between loosenit and the child class itself. All right, I've done much of the instantiation here, but here's where you need to pay attention. So, so far, we've stripped out all the bad arguments that were passed into our class and stored them in a new variable called sanitized args. But instead of having to rewrite the functionality that was in loosenit, Python provides another way to call this, and that is with the super built-in. And what super does is allow us to call a method on our parent. And here we can call init passing in star star sanitized args. And then that is what's going to finish the initialization process, updating our class's dictionary. Super is a really powerful feature and it had a significant change from Python 2 to 3. But since Python 2 is now deprecated, I'm not going to go into the difference between the two. Now there's a number of more things you can do with Super. However, I think that would be covered better in its own video later. So stay tuned for that. But for now, we have our strict init class. So let's move back down to child. And before we apply strict init, we'll save it and run it. And we'll see that yes, indeed, the sister dict now has a bad arg in there. So to change out this functionality, we'll swap out loose init for strict init. Save it, run it again. And we'll see that now sister has been cleaned up. Now I've decided I don't like all of these print statements. So I'm going to write another class that we can use to print things out a bit better. And now I'm done with the better wrapper class. Now what this class does is it overrides the dunder wrapper method, which is part of every class in Python. What the wrapper method does is it controls what's returned when you call for a string representation of an object. Or if you're on the command line, if you say print and then a certain object, wrapper is what decides what gets printed. Now you notice on line 33 that I'm using the to dict method from utils. And because I'm inheriting from utils, I can use any method that's within that class because it's like it's copying that code over to better wrapper. But there's something else really going on, which I'll show you a little bit later. However, for now, let's swap out utils for better wrapper in our child class and put it to use. Okay, now that we have better wrapper in place in the child class, we can use this notation from 45 to 47 to print out the attributes of each. So we'll save and run it. And here we say sister, and we have name kiar h13, going through each of those. And of course, the dictionary at the end. And this notation is also pretty flexible. Say if we were to add cousin as an attribute to both sister and brother, and then we save and print those. Now you can see we have cousin nested under both of those. Now there's one final important thing I wanna cover within this video. And in doing so, it's gonna shed some light on how all of this inheritance works. But to do it, I'm gonna be adding a new method to better wrapper as well as strict init.
And this new method is called print class. For strict init, it's going to print out strict init. And then for better wrapper, it's going to print out better wrapper. Now child inherits from both strict init and better wrapper. Now what do you think will happen if we were to call print class from one of the children? Well, let's try that. We'll just put a quick notice print statement saying that we are calling print class. And then we're going to call that from sister. So sister.printClass. We'll save and run it. And here we see we have strict init being printed out. And that's because Python resolves strict init before it does better wrapper. If we wanted to swap the two, we could. We could just put better wrapper before strict init, save it, run it again, and now we see better wrapper being called. And since understanding why it does this is so important, we're going to dig into it a little bit further. And the way we're going to do this is by printing out the MRO of the child class. And the MRO tells us which order Python looks to find the functionality in the class. So at the very lowest level, we see we have child, then it goes to better wrapper, and then better wrapper inherits from utils, so it'll go to utils. So it's going up the left side of the inheritance. So we have child, better wrapper. Better wrapper inherits from utils. And then we have utils up here. Next, it goes to the right side. So we see strict init, which inherits from loose init. So we have strict init, inherits from loose init, and then all classes within Python eventually inherit from the object class, which is a built-in class from Python, which provides a lot of this base functionality. Now there's one other thing that can trip you up when it comes to the MRO order. We'll make a new class just called nothing. And it literally does nothing. So we can just use a pass statement. Now what we'll do is add nothing as a parent class of better wrapper, save and run it, and we'll look at the MRO. We have child, better wrapper, nothing, then utils, then it goes to strict init, loosen it, and object. So remember, it's going up the left side, then the right side. But what would happen if we added nothing to strict init? Let's take a look save it, and run it. Again, we have child, then better wrapper. Now we have strict init, loose init, and then nothing, followed by utils and object. So adding the nothing parent to strict init brought the nothing class higher in the MRO. It'll put a parent as high as possible. And while nothing is technically before strict init for better wrapper, and this not only affected the MRO for nothing, but it also brought up the order for utils. So this is very important because look at better wrapper. We have nothing to the left side and utils to the right side. So again, it would be nothing and then utils. And loose init got moved lower. And that's because for strict init, loose init is to the left of nothing which now puts it lower in the MRO. This can be a little confusing, so take your time with this. And if you need to, play the section back a few times. Just remember that when it comes to the MRO, when you have common parents, those parents will be moved above any other parents on the same level. If you have any questions on this, please leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to fill in any gaps. But that wraps up this video. Now that you understand inheritance, try mixing and matching classes to see what you can come up with. What is your favorite trick with inheritance? Or was it something I showed today? Leave a comment down below to let me know. As always, today's code will be added to the understanding GitHub repo, so check the description for a link. And of course, if you have any questions or suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover, leave a comment for me. 
To keep up with this series, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.